Hello folks, this is Dr. Christopher Jackson, PhD, DOM Florida, and our practice here is a path to wellness. And so we're continuing this series for a path to wellness, helping people on a path to wellness. And what we're focusing on today is women's hormones. So I'm going to start off by giving you a little bit of information on what a hormonal cycle looks like. And so some of you may be familiar with this, especially females may be familiar with this. However, a lot of men are not familiar with this and all they know really is, hey, the woman has this time of the month where you stay away. But there are reasons behind that and there are pretty deep reasons dealing with hormones. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into this. So if we look at a woman's cycle and say we start day one when she has her period. Um, what's happening about that time is endometrial tissue or the tissue inside her uterus starts to shed. As that happens, then some of that tissue comes off and goes into uh, through the cavities and out of her body and some of the blood that flows with that goes out. And that's really what menstruation is. That's the flow of blood and tissues out of her uterus. Then what happens is, and this is a temperature chart that I'm showing you, uh, this recovers and tissue starts to rebuild and then the temperature will rise. This is a temperature reflecting essentially the progesterone level, which is one of the female hormones involved. And then there will be a dip. Now, leading up to that dip, I'll explain more about that dip in just a sec here. Leading up to that dip, we have other things going on. For example, estrogen is increasing. Okay. And as the estrogen e increases, it gets to a certain point where there's a threshold where it triggers the thinning of the walls of follicles. So this phase here is called the follicular phase. Some kind of lump in the menstruation with that, but this basically the first half cycle is the follicular phase. Okay, so as the follicles are being developed inside the ovaries of the woman, particularly one side usually, one then the other and it swaps. Um, estrogen is increasing, helping to proliferate the uterine development, helping to increase that development uh, within the uterus. And that's basically making an environment ready for implantation for a pregnancy. And as that's happening, follicles are developing and coming closer and closer to the surface of the ovary. Then, assuming just one, but most of the time, just one of those follicles will come to the surface. And as it comes to the surface, the wall of the follicle is being thinned, partly through the influence of estrogen. Reaching that threshold, that's when that wall thins to the point that an ovum pops out. Now an ovum pops out and then we go into this period where the temperature drops dramatically. And there are lots of reasons and other hormones involved, but we're trying to keep it simple today. And the temperature dips and goes through this dip and then a consistent rise after that. And it may rise like something like that. So right here, right in this vicinity, is ovulation. And a lot of people, including women, will confuse ovulation with when the period's coming and things like that. They're very different, as you can see. Um, right here, or this area here, is when we usually associate with all the signs and symptoms of the dreaded PMS. 
okay? So that's leading up to the period, and some women still experience many of the symptoms during their period as well. So the phase during this part of the cycle is called the luteal phase, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So that's called the luteal phase. I'll just short form luteal phase. This is the Greek letter phi, by the way, just for phase. Phi phase. So follicular phase, luteal phase. Okay, so this is the luteal phase. Now, the reason for that is that when the follicle gets to the surface and the wall thins and the ovum pops out, then that follicle becomes a gland. It starts to act as a gland, producing more hormones. And at that time, we now call it the corpus luteum. Therefore, following that is the luteal phase. Okay? So we go first half of the cycle, and we call it cycle. A lot of, a lot of women call menstruation their cycle, but the cycle actually is from the beginning of menstruation to the beginning of the next one. That's a cycle just before the beginning of the next one. So the full cycle has these phases, okay, the follicular phase and the luteal phase. Let's ignore this one for right now. We can break it up into two parts, but we'll just call this the follicular phase. Um, during this time, progesterone is increasing, as is estrogen, okay? But during this other phase, the progesterone is going much higher with the assistance of the corpus luteum, which used to be a follicle. Uh, so we have luteal phase and follicular phase. Now we take the number of days here, and the standard you will hear is a 28-day cycle. So this is day one. This is day 28. Day 29 is day one. Okay? That's the ideal. That's the optimal cycle. Women have cycles that are shorter or longer than this. They can have ovulation come early, like maybe day 10 or day 11 instead of day 14, which is optimal. So this would be day 14 in our optimal plan, right? All right? But reality is many women do not have anything near ideal. They may have irregular cycles where sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long. And that can be affected by when ovulation happens. You know, if you look at this part of the cycle, 14 days there, 14 days here, if you ovulate sooner, then this part of the cycle happens sooner, and therefore the end of the overall cycle happens sooner. You see? So if you have ovulation here, then you're going to have this occurring sooner. And that is one of the reasons that women will have a shortened cycle. Or it may take a while before ovulation occurs. Over here, for example. And therefore, it takes longer to get to the end of that cycle. So you may have like a 32, 33 day cycle or even longer because it takes longer to get there. And this all has to do with the balance of hormones. So this is about the timing of the cycles. All right, ideal being 28 days. the one in the middle. Now, many things happen with this, and they have to do, many of these signs and symptoms that are usually associated with um, the cycle happen because of an imbalance in the hormones. 
And some of these things can be acne. You may not be aware that these are related to your cycle and the balance of your hormones, but acne can be there. Acne can be present just before or during your period. That's actually a sign of something going wrong with your hormonal balance. You might have bloating. You might have breast soreness. You might have cramping. You might have, um, you might have clotting. You might see these little clumps. And the coloration of that can be important as well as can the specific temperatures that are showing up here. The levels of the temperatures tell us about somewhat about your metabolism, about thyroid function, about adrenal function. There may be adrenal issues involved. There may be many issues involved here reflected in your temperatures. This is virtually an ideal plot that I've drawn, especially this 28-day one. But in reality, it may be longer or shorter, like we talked about, but it may not flow quite this smoothly as well. In fact, most don't. There's usually something out there. A smooth flow like that is very nice and usually means minimal issues in terms of the, the cycles and, and menstrual difficulties. And this can affect not only physical issues, but also emotional, and this is you know, what we see as that time when the guys just stay away and leave them alone because, leave the woman alone because they're experiencing all, all of these emotional uh, mood swings, irritability, uh, maybe teariness, depression, all these things can come simply because your hormones are out of balance. Now, why isn't your gynecologist dealing with this? Well, your gynecologist is restricted to the use of pharmaceuticals. And the pharmaceuticals, you have the pill. You may have IUDs, things like that, that may have hormones involved. But that's a very limited repertoire in dealing with the balancing of the hormones. Not so much in terms of, you know, if you want to use birth control. And birth control certainly has its issues and just look up the side effects. I don't need to get into all of them, but I'll say that blood clotting is one possibility and infertility is another. So there are a lot of issues that come with imbalance in the hormones, but this gives you some insight into what that cycle is all about. And we'll just start there. So if you'd like to learn more, you certainly can come see us as a patient. Uh, if you'd like to contact A Path to Wellness, our phone number is 727-329-9637. Um, our website is www.aptw.net. And we're located in Northeast St. Petersburg, Florida. And so if you would like a nice little vacation in Florida, what an excuse that could give you to get away from the cold or just come visit Disney World. All right, nice talking to you, and we'll talk to you next time in our series on women's hormones.